uh, tonight, West African countries could start using a single currency, the ECHO, in January 2020 after leaders endorsed the currency at its 55th summit in Abuja, Nigeria. ECOWAS Commissioner for Macroeconomic Policy and Economic Research, Kofi Kunedua Praku, has been explaining progress made so far by ECOWAS members for the introduction of the ECHO. In terms of meeting some of the convergence criteria, we are one of the most successful economies in, in West Africa right now. Our rate of growth, GDP growth, has been impressive. We are hoping we will continue on that track. We have to be mindful of the budget deficits, uh, and, 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 and that's, that's our critical issue. So, and I'm hoping that we are taking cognizance of that, and that is uh, one of our biggest challenges. For example, some of the countries, without mentioning names, that are meeting the, current, the convergence criteria now are probably not the strongest economies. And therefore, probably, just speculating, that will be difficult to just start with them alone. We need some of the bigger economies, and the three largest economies are Nigeria, Ghana second, Cote d'Ivoire third, and fourth, Senegal. So if these countries are there, then it makes it even better, mm. so the smaller countries can join. Mm. But we have not made any distinction. We have said that the countries that meet the convergence criteria will start. Mm. As others meet the convergence criteria, they will join. Mm. And I can't predict which countries will be able to meet. We'll hope for that Ghana we are, will be there. Of course, I have to. I have to foot, okay. hope that my own country will be there. Meanwhile, Head of Research at Data Bank, Alex Wine, says the introduction of a single currency would not necessarily excite investors and attract them onto the stock market next year. Sharing his thoughts on the marketplace, Mr. Wine noted meeting the convergence criteria alone does not mean the economic fundamentals of the sub-region have changed. If you look at the market conditions now, I don't think that investors are going to be uh, excited about the introduction of this currency next year. Uh, but I must also say that currency stability is one of the key criteria that investors, in particular foreign investors, actually look at before bringing their money uh, here. But many analysts, uh, my, my opinion is there is more to be done. Just by meeting the criteria doesn't necessarily mean, in my opinion, doesn't necessarily mean that the fundamentals of these ECOWAS economies have changed, and for that reason, we are going to have a stronger currency as, 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 as a whole. But, um, I mean, if, if it happens that the currency becomes stable or be, becomes stable than the CD, then possibly that could help attract some capital or foreign capital in, into Ghana. But as it stands now, uh, I don't think that investors are going to um, react based on, based, on, based on this news because. Um, structurally, I think uh, the ECOWAS region needs to do more. For instance, I, I don't think that uh, the economies, uh, the regional economy is, is, is strong enough to support even a bailout in the event that one of the countries that have adopted this currency or that will adopt this currency is in crisis. In terms of crisis, I, I don't think that uh, the region is, is strong enough to absorb this or to, to bail out countries that find themselves in crisis. A stable economy is what investors actually want. So obviously, uh, if your currency, your inflation rate is, is low, I think for domestic investors, we are happy because then uh, in rare terms, we tend to get more when we have lower infl inflation rate. But foreign investors actually care more about the stability of the local unit, you know. So if this currency can be managed well, uh, from what I have seen, I think the 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 the, the target seemed quite plausible. But uh, that is another another argument because for me, I, I think that it will have significant impact impact on growth on the economy when you are curtailing fiscal uh, deficit or you are curtailing government spending. Yeah, but obviously, if they're able to manage that and have a very stable currency, obviously Ghana being one of the brightest economies in the West Africa region will attract uh, more uh, investment into the market. 
Well, so that was early on the marketplace with Emmanuel Abwajiriafi. Right now, we can speak with trade expert Richard Abumpabeng on the e impact of the introduction of the ECHO on international trade relations. Uh, thanks for uh, being with us tonight. Uh, so a single currency to boost trade amongst member countries, is that what ECOWAS needs right now? Exactly. This is what we have been speaking about, that if you want to have smooth trading, then you need to harmonize your currency. Mm. So what ECOWAS has done now is in the right direction. Well, there are some others uh, who think that it is not the right time, and they say that there, there are barriers, such as uh, language barriers, that need to be tackled. We've got issues with customs at the borders. It, it's not easy for one uh, business uh, man or woman to get into the country from the other country. And other things like protectionism of uh, economies that have to be tackled, not necessarily a single currency. No, we are not reinventing the wheel. Others have done it. And you see, the other time when we were talking uh, with uh, George, I did indicate that we are going into this integration with our identity well established. Now, if you are saying you have common currency, mm. it doesn't mean that you are leaving your economy for the entire region. Everybody will be building here. The underscoring point is the currency. And the currency here, what we are talking about, is to check illicit financial flow. As things are now, when other neighbors come into your country and they trade, they don't spend your money in their various countries. So chances are that they will change your money into a common currency, in this case, safer or dollar. And then they take it away, which is more convertible. But if we know that we all have a common currency in Ghana, Burkina Faso, Nigeria, Cote d'Ivoire, what's the need for you to change money that you have taken here? You can spend that money in Nigeria. You can spend that money in Cote d'Ivoire. And therefore, if we see you in currency um, exchange and what have you, then we can be dealing with people. So I think it is in the right direction. And, and how about uh, foreign exchange? Because here in Ghana, we've had troubles with the uh, CD depreciating against the dollar. Now we, we, we are looking at having a common currency. How does that make um, our economy stronger? No, how um, would the CD exchange be having problems? It's having problems because our neighbors come and do the exchange. That's what happens. And they are causing those uh, uh, deficiencies in our currency. Now we are harmonized. So it's nothing like Ghana City or whatever. It is the echo. I don't know if, if they will use the word echo. Because uh, what I do know is that they have some uh, committee to work out the name of the currency and the graphics of the currency. So let's wait and see when it comes. If you go into the Eurozone, you don't have Euro for Germany, Euro for um, Portugal, and all not. They are all using the Euro. And if one country has its own peculiar problem, it will be spelled out. Your problem at, let's say, Ghana, would not necessarily mean the same problem in Nigeria. No. It depends on how you are managing your economy. So within the Eurozone, there are strong economies, as we have weak economies. And it will be identified because they are there with their identity. And, and there are some who also think this is not necessary at, at this point, where we are also talking about uh, intra-Africa trade when it comes to the AU setting. Um, people th seem to think that in future, the AU may want to adopt a common currency for the continent. No, what will happen is that by 2034, there will be that, uh, what uh, Africa is saying, the AU is saying that all regions within Africa must have a common currency by 2034. So if we are having our 2020, then we are ahead by 14 years, which is good for us. By the time we get there, we are used 
and will be masters in the game at that time. So I think it is not any other day but now. I'm happy with it. All right, thanks for your time tonight. That was trade analyst uh, Richard Ampar been sharing his thoughts there on the introduction of a common currency, hopefully uh, next year. And so that's a question we've been asking you. Um, I asked him about uh, how that uh, impacts uh, foreign, the FX market. So uh, let's go on to Facebook because we've been asking you uh, that same question, whether you think that the echo uh, can help check the dominance of the dollar against local currencies. And uh, there you see it. 42% are saying it can help, 58% uh, saying it will not have any um, effect at all. And so that poll is currently underway. It ends in 21 hours. So most of you think that uh, there's not going to be any uh, impact or much of an impact if we, if we should introduce the Equinex here when it comes to checking the dominance of the dollar against the local currencies. Let's turn to other news stories now. The Driver and Vehicle Licensing Authority, DVLA, says a review of the luxury tax policy by the Ministry of Finance could help government to maximize revenue. The tax, which was introduced last year, has experienced some setbacks in implementation with calls for several stakeholders for it to be removed. Now, speaking with Joy Business, after receiving an award at the Ghana Information Technology and Telecoms event in Accra, the Deputy Chief Executive of the DVLA, Prince of Pukwe Duse, disclosed that the review is likely to boost government's revenue. The vehicle income tax was introduced into the country's tax regime to help government mobilize revenue from luxury vehicle users. Though the target for the policy has not been achieved, users of these vehicles have petitioned government to scrap it entirely from the country's tax laws. Less than a year of implementation, Minister of Finance Ken Furiata has indicated that there will be a review of the program during the mid-year budget to be presented to Parliament. Deputy Chief Executive of the DVLA, Prince of Pukwe Duse, told joy business that discussions are underway to reform the policy he believes this could help government to realize the full benefit of the program it was obvious that there are a few things that we need to do in order to realize the full um, income or revenues that government intended to re uh, realize from the imposition of that of that levy that is what the finance minister spoke about there's going to be a whole lot of discussion in fact the discussions have started it may, it may lead to perhaps a change of name, it may lead to change of category of vehicles, we, we never know. But the discussions have just started and I'm sure that uh, in a few weeks to come there will be an announcement on the future of that levy. The Driver and Vehicle Licensing Authority received three awards at the Ghana Information Technology and Telecom Awards, including the best government website and best use of ICT in the public sector. Opokwe Duse also disclosed that the integration process between the authority and the national health insurance is completed and will be launched soon. We've, we've had all the discussions, we've looked at the various systems and how the integration um, um, has to be done. You know, the, the, the biggest challenge is the differences in, in platforms that the various institutions use, but we've somewhat surmounted that. Through the use of APIs and all, we've been able to um, determine how we would um, sync all the databases. I must say that um, sometime during this year, the launch will be, will be done and then we would have a full update for, for, for the public. The award is in recognition of the authority's drive towards digital transformation. Now to Wenchin, the Bono region, where livestock producers have lauded the recently launched Rearing for Food and Jobs program, describing it as a real game changer if implemented properly. They are optimistic the initiative could help address several challenges confronting the livestock industry across the country. Join us as Nesta Kafuya Juma interacted with some livestock producers within Wenchi and has filed the following report. Stock producers are very optimistic that rearing for food and jobs will rejuvenate the fortunes of players in the value chain as well as enhance Ghana's economic gains. They have therefore cautioned government against political favoritism in the implementation of the program in order to achieve its main purpose. This sounds free, free, you know. 
It is difficult finding food for our animals, especially when wheat spraying has become rampant. So, we spend about 200 Ghana cities a week. Government should rather support those who are already into livestock rearing. That will help. We have challenges with getting drugs and other things that will help the cattle thrive. So we will be happy if government helps us through this program. Rearing for food and jobs has been introduced to increase meat production by 41% and poultry by 400% and further generate employment of over 1.5 million. It is also aimed at raising the standards of living and thereby making agriculture attractive for the educated youth. Nesta Kafuya Jumas reports. Now, some creative artists have urged government to pay more attention to the fine arts sector. Now, according to the CEO of Ira Arts, Iraja Toto Alote, the art industry is a promising avenue to invest in and make significant gains. There's more in this report by Alberta Bisu. The art industry, which is under the Ministry of Tourism and Creative Art, is considered an important avenue to attract tourists as well as a major source of livelihood. A pencil sketch artist, Iradra Toto Alote, a trained teacher, left the classroom to pursue her passion in fine art sector. She says the decision has reaped significant economic benefits to her. My mom made me continue as a what they call training college, Accra Teachers Training College, to be a professional teacher. And I taught for just a year. I had a dream, I had a vision in my mind. Nobody could see, but I could see it. And then I decided to follow it, my passion, and that was drawing. Okay? It's not easy, but I mean, it's worth it. In a week, I can make probably. 4,000 Ghana cities in a week because if the, somebody specializes in this artwork, it's 1,000 cities. So just one person's artwork is 1,000 cities. She also noted there could be more innovative ways to help promote the work of artists in the country. I believe in hard work. You'd have to do the work, push yourself out there. And if the government could help in with organizing programs like those art festivals and things, I mean, we, hardly, we hardly see those things. But if they could organize art festivals, audition, uh, auctions and things where we could display our works to people, if they could purchase, or even if just making uh, publicizing our works and all that, I think will go a long way. Joseph Budu, a digital artist, tells Joy Business, social media has become an essential tool for him to promote his business. It took me about a year and a half before people got to know what I was doing. So I didn't start making money exactly from the four years. But that's when I started learning it. Yeah, and since they have worked for a lot of people, I can't remember all of them. And most of my clients, I get them from Facebook because that's where I mostly post my artwork. And when they see it, then they will contact me. Okay, so how has social media helped you in your work? For me, social media has really helped me a lot because that's most of the money that I've made is through social media. They're all hoping to expand their business and employ some people to train them. Albert Abisio's report for Joy Business. And we have some more time to squeeze in this one. The Ghana Chamber of Telecommunications is lamenting the increasing rate of fiber cars as well as cable fuel and battery thefts and some incidents of vandalism to infrastructure of its members. Now, the chief executive of the chamber, that is uh, Kenneth Ashibe, says the development has increased operational costs and all efforts must be made to curtail uh, the situation. Mr. Ashibe has been uh, meeting industry players in Cape Coast to find a lasting solution to the challenge. Richard Kujunyakon has more. The maiden workshop brought together stakeholders from the road agencies, road contractors, utility service providers, 
local governments, regulators and others who work within the reservations or play critical roles in its management. Operator data guarded by the Ghana Telecoms Chamber reveals there has been over 2,000 fiber cuts within the last six months of the year 2019. These cuts, which were caused mainly by private developers, road contractors, unknown criminals and other utility providers, cost the industry over 30 million Ghana cities in direct repairs only. The central region alone recorded about 200 cuts out of these totals. CEO of the Ghana Telecoms Chamber, Ken Ashibi, says the happenings are worrying. We are recording about 30, 300, like 300 cuts a month now. And I'm sure if you ask Urban Rose to start telling you about how much they are spending in terms of relocation, cost, highways and all of that, it runs into billions. There's also the challenging incident of vandalization of telecommunication infrastructure, from the stealing of fuel to the stealing of generators to batteries. Now the current one we have been seeing is that towers the whole towers are even being stolen. And all of that tends to affect the service that is provided to all of us. The industry also recorded over 150,000 liters of diesel and 240 batteries stolen from the south side with a whopping 18 million affected subscribers and businesses within the value chain. Central Regional Minister Kwame Nadankan proposed a solution to minimize the occurrences. And as you say, I know this is not too much for you to do. I know what you can do. That a certain push to ensure that even the procurement process before finally the contractor possesses the site, that it must be made a compulsory portion of the procurement process where all of you stakeholders must meet and look at the site whether you have a cable there and all of that, so that attention is drawn to it. And it's something that we need to push, because in the end, we bear the cost ourselves. The meeting focused on rallying participants towards building an action plan that promotes effective collaboration and better coordination within the right of ways while preserving each other's infrastructure. Richard Kwejo Joy News, Cape Coast. More news is always on our website, uh, joybusinessnews.com. Uh, pressure on the city, 82% of products in supermarkets are imported. That's according to research. If you want to read more about that on joybusinessnews.com. My name is Daryl Carr. Thanks for watching our show tonight. We are back same time tomorrow.